It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Francis Collins, the 16th Director of the National Institutes of Health. A physician geneticist himself, Dr. Collins has been a true champion for biomedical research and is committed to advancing public health through research and innovation. This is an exciting time for nutrition research at the NIH with the recent release of the 2020-2030 Strategic Plan for NIH Nutrition Research, a call for precision nutrition research, as well as other efforts that NIH is undertaking to advance nutrition research. Dr. Collins, we are appreciative of your longstanding leadership and dedication to the research enterprise. Hello, American Society for Nutrition. I'm Francis Collins, the director of the National Institutes of Health. I'm glad to join you by this virtual mechanism, although I would have much rather had the opportunity to meet with you in person. But the global pandemic has prevented a lot of those kinds of meetings for you, for me, for all of us. I understand the wise folks at ASN took advantage of the virtual format to widely advertise that the meeting was happening and therefore were able to draw in a much broader audience than a standard physical meeting would have accommodated. So maybe there's a little silver lining there in terms of spreading the word about nutrition research at this point. And I'm glad that more people will learn about those because I do think this is a critical moment for nutrition research with new ideas and new opportunities and a new strategic plan I'm about to tell you about. Uh, this would be a great time uh, to get people fired up about this field and directions that could be pursued. I should also note, even as we are all doing what we're doing um, in terms of staying at home, I'm here in my home office in Chevy Chase, Maryland, in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19, we also know that that is a disease which hits particularly hard those with chronic illnesses. And we also know nutrition plays a significant role in those illnesses. So it's all connected. And even though so much of the focus right now is on that coronavirus, here, I'll show you mine. <laughs> this is a 3D printed version of the thing that we're trying to deal with here. Those are the spike proteins that we're trying to raise vaccines against. And it is a fully consuming obsession of all of us to try to make sure all the best research resources are brought to bear to tackle that particular challenge. And again, I think it's fair to say, while this might seem like an infectious disease situation, it's also a situation about chronic illness. And here's where I hope nutrition can contribute a lot going forward to understanding the causes and the preventions of many of those illnesses. As NIH director, I've had the privilege of being engaged now for more than 11 years in various aspects of nutrition research. If you read my blog, and I'm sure you do, well, some of you do anyway, uh, every Tuesday and every Thursday, I try to write about something that's happened that seems exciting in the scientific literature, often a paper that's just been published. And yes, there are quite a few of those that focus on new insights about nutrition, and I'm counting on there being even more going forward. Maybe some of them ideas that get started at this meeting. My own research lab actually works on a nutritional disorder, type 2 diabetes. My lab has been involved in that now for some 27 years. And the progress that's been made there has been astounding in terms of what we've learned about risk factors, particularly from genomics. But we still have a long way to go to know how best to put that into practice in order to prevent and better treat the disease. So I've been inspired by the opportunity to look at this field and was delighted that there was an opportunity to maybe stand back a bit from the course that we've been on and come up with a vision of where nutrition research might go a strategic plan. And so uh, a variety of experts at NIH, led particularly by Dr. Griff Rogers, the director of NIDK, uh, got together along with his colleagues, Diana Bianchi of the Child Health Institute, uh, Dr. Ned Sharpless of the Cancer Institute, and Dr. Gary Gibbons of the Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and assembled a group of experts to try to put together a bold strategic plan that would stretch over the next 10 years 2020 to 2030, that could guide us in terms of where these opportunities might lie. Um, Dr. Rogers and the rest of them will tell you that I drove them a little crazy because when they brought me the first version of the strategic plan, I said, you know, it's good, but 
it doesn't have that sort of really bold, looking forward, bringing in some brand new technologies and ideas that I was hoping for. Please go back and see what you could do. And they came back again and I said, getting better, but still I want to see something that will really electrify the people who read this like, wow, you could do that. Because that's the kind of strategic plan I think NIH ought to be putting forward for a field like nutrition, which is so fundamental to everything. So, yeah, third try, they came back and uh, we decided, yeah, this is pretty good. And so that is, in fact, the strategic plan that you saw, hopefully, have had a chance to look at that came out just very recently on May 27th of this year. And it is a 10-year plan that aims to try to bring together all of the science that one could to try to take nutrition research to the next level. And a lot of it focuses on what we are calling precision nutrition. Instead of the one-size-fits-all approach, which was kind of the best we could do for a long time, let's say we can do better now by bringing other aspects of this together with technologies that will allow us to do a better job for individuals of saying, here is the kind of dietary input that would be most likely to keep you healthy if you are, or most likely to help you if you have a chronic illness. From the cradle to the grave, we need to understand all of that and for individuals. So a lot of this uh, new strategic plan does reflect that theme of precision nutrition. If you've looked at it, you'll know that there are four goals. The first one called spur discovery and innovation through foundational research. That's the basic science part of what this plan puts forward. And that includes, uh, as examples, uh, more information about the microbiome and the role that it plays in, in diet. Uh, new technici technologies for capturing dietary intake, because we could do a lot better than uh, questionnaires that we've had to depend on. And the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning with large data sets to really make inferences about diet and health that maybe were not so easy to see just by directly examining uh, reams of paper. Second goal, investigate the role of dietary patterns and behaviors for optimal health. Well, okay, this is basically when and what should people eat? How do you stay healthy? What's good for all of us? We want to understand such things as circadian rhythms and the potential role of fasting, which is a big, important issue right now. And individual variability playing a big role in this part. Goal three, defining the role of nutrition across the lifespan even preconception, certainly prenatal, and then from birth on, and a lot of focus here on what happens in those early years, because we do know that developmental origins of health and disease, though had, is a big deal, and we still don't have nearly enough information to understand that connection. And then goal four, reducing the burden of disease in clinical settings. Here's the idea of food as medicine. Hippocrates spoke about that, and we have not fully figured out how to make that a reality. Such things as uh, when do you initiate nutritional support for somebody who's ill? When do you stop it? You don't need it anymore. And a big question, how about probiotics? And how can we figure out how to take a very big field, at least in terms of what you see on the grocery store shelves, and provide a more rigorous scientific basis behind this in terms of how it can help people both treating illnesses and avoiding them in the first place? In addition to those four goals, there are five cross-cutting areas that also fit into this and cover all the goals, minority health being one of them, health of women being another, uh, data science, system science, artificial intelligence, all of that across all those goals. Certainly the importance of rigor and reproducibility in everything that we're doing. And of course, uh, training the next generation, the strategic nutrition workforce. And I would hope, by the way, that one of the things that this will do is by having this set of bold new ideas, we'll recruit new people into this workforce who may come from a different discipline with a different perspective. We want to invigorate nutrition research with those kind of interdisciplinary moments where the sparks fly between people who have different ideas and different maybe languages, and then they figure out how you can take an engineering perspective and a biological perspective and a microbiological perspective and turn them into a really interesting project. That's often where the big advances happen, and I hope this workforce will allow that. And I hope we'll bring in early stage investigators to the field, and particularly diverse investigators who bring their perspectives, 
which is often also the way we make great progress. So that's what we're trying to do and with these goals and these cross-cutting elements. This was all guided by this nutrition research task force. We now have a number of groups that are starting to think about implementation, but we need to hear from you about other ideas. I can tell you, and this should be good news, uh, that the Common Fund, which is part of NIH, that tries to look at research projects that don't necessarily fit neatly within a single institute, but touch on many of them. Common Fund has decided they want to put some funding into nutrition research, and they're asking you, through an RFI, a request for information, to provide some ideas about what would be the most exciting ways to pursue this precision nutrition approach. And that RFI is out there. It came out on May the 12th, and it's open until July 1st. So I really hope uh, those of you who are listening to this and have ideas about what we might want to invest in uh, will respond to that. We will read all of those very carefully. We already have a workshop set up for January 11th and 12th of 2021. That'll be at NIH. We sure hope at that point we'll be face-to-face, but of course, we're going to have to play all of this by ear and watch and see what happens uh, with this epidemic. We hope by then we'll have vaccines that people can take in uh, large numbers, but that's obviously a bold and uh, challenging trajectory that we need to be on over the coming months. But I hope you get the sense from all of this that we at NIH want to be your partners. The nutrition research field, I believe, is poised to make a leap forward by taking advantage of a lot of new insights and technologies and rethinking the approach to answering those age-old questions about how food influences our health and what we can do about it. And so I'll be watching this with great interest as it takes shape. And as we put forward this 10-year plan, I'm really imagining that when the ASN meets in 2030 and looks back, uh, you may say, wow, that was an inflection point. That was a point where we realized we had an opportunity uh, to do something pretty exciting and to reboot some areas and start some others and basically upgrade everybody uh, to the point of making some new advances possible that are going to benefit the health of the public, which I know is what you all care about as well. So again, with apologies that I can't be with you in person, but you can't be with each other in person either. Uh, I'm still hoping this will be a meeting where a lot of ideas get exchanged, collaborations get started, vision gets stimulated, and we all move forward into this new decade uh, with a plan to bring this science uh, to bear on a a long list of public health issues and bring better health to our nation and to the world. So thanks for the chance to share those ideas with you. I'll very much look forward to hearing what happens at your meeting.